You are listening to God First with Rev. Dr. Nicholas Lowe. Our message is simple. God has a purpose for your life. He has created you on purpose for a purpose. We pray that these podcast episodes, in some small way, can aid in your journey of faith by guiding and inspiring you towards unlocking God's purpose for your life. Look around you this morning. Take some time. Look at the person who's right next to you. Everyone in this room and this church and those of you that are watching us online, maybe look at your family members that are sitting around the computer or the TV screen. We're all different. We comb our hair differently. We wear different clothes. We have different attitudes, different ways of approaching life. Some of us are very outgoing. Some of us are a little bit more reserved. Some of us get really impatient. Some of us are very, very patient. We all have different characteristics of who we are. And in relationships... Because we are all different, sometimes in the most intimate relationships that we can have with our friends and our family, sometimes the differences can create difficulties in a relationship. And those difficulties, at times, can cut us, can hurt us, can offend us. Sometimes those difficulties in a relationship can cause damage in a relationship through unforgiveness. You know, when I was growing up, I loved to read comic books. I enjoyed all of the Marvel characters in the comic books, and those, co- those different characters all represented different things to me. And so maybe, as I'm sharing with you this morning's sermon, as you're thinking about this sermon, that maybe you can think about the different characters in a comic book and how they might apply to the people who might have hurt, offended, or might just be totally different and difficult and causing damage in your relationships. And so let's start out with one of the more popular ones, and that is Batman. Batman is an interesting character. He's always wearing a mask. Maybe the people that have offended you are always wearing a mask. You never know what they stand for. They tell you one thing in in your presence, and then behind your back, they're totally different. And it just upsets you and just kind of frustrates you. They're constantly being very discreet. I'm Batman. (laughs) Different. Difficult. Cause damage. Or how about the Iceman? The Iceman is a cold hearted person. You try to be nice to them, you try to be kind to them, and there as that song goes, they're as cold as ice. Just no personality. Really frustrates you. Gets under your skin. Bothers you to be around that person. Or how about the Joker? The Joker is someone that just always laughs at everything. And sometimes you are the brunt of those jokes. You don't see them always laughing. They're always picking on you. You just gets you so angry, so frustrated, and you at times want to give that joker a piece of your mind. And then there is the Incredible Hulk. The Incredible Hulk to me is someone that you just kind of go to them and say, well, this kind of offended me. And then they start turning green. Their eyes get real big. You start getting scared. They start yelling and screaming, and you just simply say, I'm just going to stay away from that person. There is the incredible hawk that you might have in your life. And the reality is, friends, people are different. And if there's one anxiety and frustration that people can have in their life, it is dealing with people, the comic book characters that are in our life, that sometimes hurt, offend, and cut us. And oftentimes we think, Well, we're going to give them a piece of our mind. We're going to get them back. Only to realize that unforgiveness doesn't really bother the person who's offended you. It bothers you. Someone said it. It's like drinking poison, expecting the other person who offended you to get sick. And some of us are just drinking a lot of poison. But I want you to understand this important lesson on this fourth Sunday of Lent. And that is to remember the words of C.S. Lewis, one of the most powerful, I think, Christian authors. He said this, he said, A good Christian is someone who can forgive the inexcusable in someone else because God first forgave the inexcusable in you. That when you were lustful, 
when you were gossiping, when you lied, when you cheated, when you stole, when you spoke ill about, that the inexcusable in you, God first forgave that. And he yearns for you to forgive the people. That God doesn't want you to close your arms of love because he never closes his arms to you. That the forgiven, you and me, always forgive. I want you to open up your Bibles. We're going to look at the book of Hebrews. Amazing, amazing book in the Bible. It's page 307. We're going to look at this and hope that uh, this area, this verses will inspire you today. If you're holding on to the anger that's going on in your life, we're on page 307. We're at chapter 12. We're going to pick it up right at verse 1 and listen to it. Listen to how St. Paul talks to these, the Hebrews. He says, So then, let us rid ourselves of everything that is getting in our way and of the sin which holds on to us so tightly. That unforgiveness, friends, it is a noose around many of people's necks, and it is holding us tightly. And let us run with determination the race that God has for us. The Greek language, the St. Paul would oftentimes refer to us as Christians as athletos, as athletes. That God is calling us, through St. Paul, to be an athlete for him. And so you can't be a great athlete. You can't run the river run or any run at all if you've got things that are holding you back, that are holding down your ankles. And some of us, that sin that is holding us back, that shackle that's on our ankles today is unforgiveness. We just can't learn to forgive the Batmans, the Jokers, the Icemans and the Hulks that are in our life. Let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, on whom our faith depends from the beginning to the end. He did not give up because of the cross. On the contrary, because of the joy that was waiting for him. When that word joy is used, you know who that joy is? That joy is you and me. That Christ took up the cross for you, for me. He carried all of the sins of all of us. And let me just take a break from this for just a moment and to tell you that when you think about the life of Christ, that Christ experienced everything, as the Bible says, He experienced everything that you are going to experience in your life. That if you experience betrayal, and that's what's holding on to your unforgiveness, Jesus can relate because every one of his disciples, his friends, not one of them was there on the night in Gethsemane when they came and got him. When they tried him illegally at 9 o'clock at night in a trial that should have never ever happened. No one was there except his people that were going to wish him ill. Or how about humiliation? You know, in the cross... Oftentimes, thank God, Hollywood hasn't gotten this wrong. But in the cross, many people in traditions were hung on the cross naked. It was a way of humiliating. They didn't wear a cloth, as we oftentimes see. You were totally naked. To not after you would show someone the beating of the 39 lashes, the whipping on the shoulders, the, the destroying of the ankles, the inner thighs, the 39 tails, the whipping and the scourging. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, read the word because it's alive. It says that he was being that the Mary could not even recognize her son. He was beyond recognition because he was so swollen. So we talk about what Christ did. Don't just take it for granted. In the first words that he says on the cross is this word. Forgive. He forgave the inexcusable in us. And we're called to forgive the inexcusable in someone else. Let me put it to you a different way. You can never forgive someone more than God 
has forgiven you. You can't do it. You can't forgive God. I'm sorry, you can't forgive someone who's offended you more than God has forgiven you. So how do we, how do we let off those shackles and finish this Lenten season, this 40 days of feasting? How do we get to the point where we're at forgiveness? I want to give you three ways. One is pray for them. One of the true marks in your Christian walk of faith is when you can pray for people that are your enemies, the Batmans, the Jokers, the people that are trying to undermine you. When you can pray for them. I had someone tell me the other day, Father Nick, I am praying for them. I say this particular Bible verse. I will break the teeth of the wicked. That's an actual Bible verse that these people were praying. And I was telling them that that's not the kind of prayer that we want you to be saying in church. But God yearns for us that when we forgive, that we pray for them. And when you pray for them, this is something that I would encourage you to do. Don't just pray that they'll seek understanding, but pray God. I ask that you come into the life of this person who's hurt me, this person who's offended me. Lord, work the Holy Spirit inside of them. Guide them, Lord. Watch over them, Lord. It is powerful when you can have the humility and the humbleness to pray for the people who are hurting you. I can't believe it. It's been nine and a half years since I became the priest of this parish. I mean, the time has gone by so fast. I'm having fun. I hope that you guys are too. Uh, but the time is just extraordinary how much we have, just the time how, it, how it's gone. And I was just reflecting the other day about all that went on in that first year. You know, most priests have an interim stage before they take over a parish. They usually are an assistant priest, or they have a small parish before they take over a larger community. And you all know, because many of you were there, but I was ordained a deacon on Saturday, that Sunday, a priest, and Monday we were rocking and rolling. We were doing our thing. <laughs> and we were dealing with things, many of you might remember, many of you are new, you may not remember, but we were dealing with some things that were impacting us internally, and we were also dealing with some things that were happening externally. The economic crisis in 2008 hits all of us, and especially hit our churches. And I was scared, just as a point of total, just total honesty, y'all know me, I'm an open book for you guys. I was totally scared of being a priest. I was worried about everything that it could happen. I didn't even, I could count on my fingers just how many times I had given a sermon in my life. I didn't know how to do the paperwork, didn't know how to run a major, large community. And ask Roxanne, one of the reasons why I married her is because now my therapy is free. <laughs> but it was a scary, scary time for me. It's a shout out to my wife, all that. But, uh, <laughs> but within the first few months of my ordination, I received a letter. In this letter, it was addressed to me, and it was addressed to all of our parish leadership, and to bishops in our church and in other churches. And in this letter, it was just extremely critical of me. Very, very negative words that were spoken. Very words that were going against my character, who I am as a person. The letter attacked me and my family. Just a real negative, negative letter. At the bottom, it said, sincerely, and then it was just blank. It was just anonymous. To make matters worse, three months later, another letter came. I'm new into this ordination, new as a priest. Didn't even know what I was doing. And this another letter comes in. In this letter, again, it's really negative. Almost just slicing my character, going after every aspect of who I am and what we try to do in our church, the ministries that we provide and everything else. And again, sincerely, blank, anonymous. And I have to tell you, that early on when I received those letters, you get frustrated. You're like, we're just starting out. 
I mean, wait a couple years, then send the letter, and then you have some, there's some substance to it. But we had just started. And it undermined, I felt, early on, our ministry, what we were trying to do. And I kept thinking, why would someone write a letter that really goes after someone's character in such a harsh way? And I remember talking to one of my friends who's a, a priest of a large, large community, and he said to me, Nick, you're in good company. If they did it to Christ, they're going to do it to you. And so that night, and that comforted me a little bit, but didn't go all the way with it. But he said, why don't you just start reading your Bible and, at night and see if God will just kind of open up a verse for you. And the verse that came to my mind when I was on my knees praying for God's guidance and his encouragement was the verse that's in your worship guide today from the book of Matthew. That I got to pray for the people who are trying to persecute me. And let me encourage you, it's not easy. It's not easy. You can't wait till your feelings feel like forgiving. But you've got to make sure that when you are forgiving, it's not because that person deserves it, it's because you want to be good in the eyes of Christ. And that Christ yearns for us to forgive. And so every night and every morning, I have on my little prayer list, Anonymous. I'm praying for Anonymous tonight. Praying for Anonymous tomorrow morning. And let me just encourage you. God, I ask you to work in the life of that person. Help them to see your dream in them. Help them accomplish the goals that you have for them. Pray for the people who might be trying to persecute you, the Batmans, the Icemans, the Hulkmans that are in your life. Number two, bless them. In the Greek language, the word bless has multiple meanings. One of them is to speak nicely about. In the book of Luke, Christ says, be nice and speak nice about the people who are hurting you. That's not Luke's words, that's Jesus Christ's words. A true mark in your walk of faith is when you can speak nicely about the people who are trying to hurt you, and hurt you from what God wants for you. And number three, I want you to do good to them. Don't stoop down to their level. You are a child of light. You're a child of God. The Bible says, and you'll see in your worship guide, talks about that if people are hurting you or offending you, they go so far that Jesus says, invite them to your house, feed them, clothe them. God first gave the inexcusable in us, and he wants us to forgive the inexcusable in others. I leave you with this. So last week I talked to you about how much I love falling apart over here. I talked to you about how much I loved the study of the human body, the, of biology, and we talked about how in the core of our body there's a protein that exists within our body that's called lamin, and, and this lamin that holds our entire body together is in the shape of a cross. I encourage you to look, look that up. But I also told you that I love my second favorite subject, is that I love astronomy. I love the study of science. We live in what is called the whirlpool. We live in this particular galaxy, and this galaxy is going to be in the form of a donut. If you ever want to get close to my heart, donuts do it. <laughs> so in this galaxy that we're in, let's imagine that this donut is the galaxy. This galaxy consists of the sun, the moon, and all the plants and all the stars. That's in this donut, in this galaxy, okay? If you were to travel from this end of the galaxy that God created to this end of the galaxy that God created, this one galaxy that we are in, it would take you 100,000 light years. So you might be saying, well, what is a light year? 100,000 light years from here to here, just in our own galaxy. A light year is, think about it like that light travels at 186,000 miles per second. Okay? 
186,000 miles per second. It would have to travel 186,000 miles per second, 86,400 seconds in a day, every single day, 365 days a year, for 100,000 years to go from one galaxy, from one end of the galaxy, to the other end of the galaxy. This is the kicker. There are 32 billion galaxies. 32 billion. That's all the ones that we know of. 32 billion donuts. And Jesus Christ loved you and me so much that in this one galaxy that, that we're in, that the Earth is one of the smallest planets that to go from one end to the other would take 100,000 light years, that basically we would be, as planet Earth, just this. A little, little kernel. And imagine where you are in that little, 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 little kernel in this galaxy. In Jesus Christ, the Bible says, out of the heavens, He came down into this little kernel, the God who created the 32 billion galaxies and died on the cross. His blood was shed for us. You want to talk about how important you are to God? He could have very easily just said, I've got 32 billion others. I don't really worry about that. But you mean so much to Him that He wants to give you eternal life. And he came into that little kernel. And he's asking you and me to forgive. He taught us through his own example of betrayal, humiliation, hitting, discouraging, all of that to forgive. And I'm encouraging all of you that the God who made the entire universe loved you so much that he died for all of your sins. And he wants you so don't wait till you feel like forgiving, because that won't happen. But to do it because God gives us the example of what he wants. And so pray for the Batmans in your life. Bless the Hawkmans that are in your life. Do good to the Icemans that are in your life. Because God first forgave the inexcusable in you, so that you can forgive the inexcusable in others the true Christians, because they have received forgiveness, go out and forgive. You have been listening to God First with Father Nicholas Lowe. Father Nicholas is the priest at St. John the Divine Greek Orthodox Church in Jacksonville, Florida. For more information about him and his parish, please visit www.stjohnthedivine.com. This has been a listener-supported presentation of Ancient Faith Radio.